Good afternoon, good evening, good morning. This is the Wix Online Mini 184, the beginning of March. Going to roll through. We've got a good agenda, a little bit of discussion, so let's go jump into that right away. As always, these meetings are recorded and posted up on YouTube after this for those of you that aren't with us right here, right now. What are we doing today? We're going to do a little triage, get that done, have a couple bugs to talk about. Uh, then we'll do a discussion that I keep pushing off, and I may keep uh pushing and pushing it until we finally come an answer but we're going to talk about it uh today and maybe next week if we have to and so on and so forth so uh that topic is wix 4 extension versioning which is the uh longest running open bug that we've had uh in triage for entirely too long so let's go talk about it for a little bit i also wanted to have a little bit of time to talk about the meeting time this meeting time uh with daylight savings times coming up that creates a minor glitch for some of us given that we're internationally distributed and then, as always, we'll do questions and comments. So let's go ahead and get underway. Bob, you ready for a triage? Let's do it. All right. Uh, as always, we're skipping the first one because, well, we're going to talk about the first one um, in the next slide. Wix Internet Shortcut Failed to Set Shortcut. Um, gave a log. Something is not right. Unable to reproduce it. Runs on... Hmm. It looks related to this bug. Hmm. Same error. Yeah, generic. Generic something went wrong kind of thing? Yeah. Invalid yeah, parameter. Was, that was a long time ago. Yeah. Invalid parameter. Awesome. Uh, I don't know what we do with this. They can't ever produce it. And if it only repos on a particular loca localized OS, then out of ideas there. All right. So I guess we push in the 4X and be like, yeah, sure. Someone would be great if someone comes across as like, oh, I got it. I got it. That'd be fantastic. Um, right? Yeah. The only other thing I can think of is, is um, – <sighs> Been in, something we talked about in the grander scheme of things before, which is the you know ignore error or continue on error or whatever. Oh, make it optional. Yeah. If you don't get a shortcut, you don't care. Uh, vital, basically, it's vital. Vital, yeah. Um, Non-vital internet shortcut. Interesting. Also. So, Windows 10 changes a lot of the rules about shortcuts anyway. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, I believe that something pointing to URLs or like chums or PDFs or something that you install will not show up on the start menu. So, yeah, I've seen them doing that kind of stuff. Yeah. It, it, yeah, you know, adding a non-vital or vital um, kind of, you know, I think makes sense. Sure. So I want to do it. You can do it in 4X. Okay. Not against it. Non-vital shortcut. Yeah, I guess. Um, we did an ARM64 thing last week, like we talked about two weeks ago, was it? I think that was the timeline. Um, and the people that have ARM64 machines are trying it out and finding issues. Um, so Bob has been doing a lot of the front work for that, and so he's going to go dig into this thing. Interesting. Eyes emoji. I guess it means eyes on, looking at it, those kinds of things. Um, not rolling your eyes, but anyway. Um, problem I with WoW64 handling on ARM64 and doing the right thing, which is, yeah, I could see that being tucked away in some one of the custom actions. We have a number of custom actions that know, quote unquote, that they're 32-bit, and so they do WoW64 tricks mm -hmm. to work with files in the 64-bit portion of the file system. Mm -hmm. And in the case of ARM64, the custom actions are being compiled for 64-bit, right. so they don't need to play that game anymore. Which leads to the larger idea of not in Wix 3.14, but maybe in 4 of actually shipping native 64-bit stuff and getting rid of all those games that we play. Right. But uh, 
that's not here, that'll be good to come back. And compiler does a step version up to 500 for ARM64. That seems like something you should just do. That's yep. Because it, it does it for x64. I don't think we're going to have to look at that. It's the same thing. But yeah, cool. Good, good, good. Nice to see people jumping on that right away after getting that out there. So those will get taken care of in, in order. All right. That's triage. So let's go back and talk about this extension should version their IDs. I think it's the next thing. Uh-huh, me. Did I get my... Ah, I got the agenda right. All right. Um, so there are two things that we kind of got talked about a long time ago when we first discussed this um, to discuss. And there are two areas of versioning the uh, assets inside the Waste tool set um, on the major version boundaries. Uh, the first set, and I think is less controversial, is the table name and custom action names. And I think there was a general idea that standardizing was a good idea. In other words, prefix everything with Wix 4, all table names and custom actions name with Wix 4, and then suffix them with the platform, um, especially as we add more platforms with x86, x64, a64, all that kind of stuff. I think there wasn't a lot of contention about that. Um, and so going about and doing that now is actually a thing that Bob's working on probably as we or before we were here, before uh, before this meeting started. Um, the more contentious thing, um, and I still don't know where I come down, so I'm looking kind of for input from all the people that have been playing on this uh, front, is extension name and assembly version. And there are essentially two options, I think, that we came up with. One is extensions to be named with the version number in their name and in their namespace. So Wix toolset 4 dot extension name uh, dot Wix ext dot DLL kind of thing. So that sort of stuff. And then version that at 1.0, first version. So it's the first version of the Wix toolset 4 extension. Um, and that then basically the extension works Normally, it, it supports breaking changes because you change the version numbers in the uh, appropriate semantic versioning ways, and everything works downstream from that. Oh, by the way, I said assembly version here, but that also rolls up to the NuGet package name as well. I probably should have been included that here as well. But this will also be the name that it shows up in NuGet um, on top of everything else. So the other option, of course, is to not put the four in the Wix toolset namespace and instead put the four in the version number. So you'd have the Wix toolset extension version four, and then the namespace is consistent with the rest of the toolset. But breaking changes are harder to describe because you can't say Wix toolset extension name v5.0 on a breaking change because presumably that would be for Wix 5, not for Wix toolset. Um, and then you also get into if there, if, when, there's a Wix toolset 4.1, um, given that there's an, an alignment between the 4.0 namespace, the 4.0 version and the Wix version, do people start assuming that those kind of go together? Um, and that's kind of a dis similar discussion that I watched the .NET Core team struggle with when they had the .NET standard, and uh, that where the version numbers of the .NET standard were aligned with the versions of .NET Core, and then do they keep doing that? Would it confuse people? And so on and so forth. Um, I'm, like I said, I'm, I can, I can be persuaded with reasonable arguments either direction. Do you guys have any strong opinions? Sean, Bob, I know Jacob is around here somewhere. I guess uh, consistency is what I would want to strive for. So, so the second option? Yeah, the second option. But then that pretty much means you can't do breaking changes in the extensions. At least not in the version number. <laughs> you have to, yeah, people would automatically, because if you do a NuGet update, the last and the last digits were the only thing changing, then um, it would roll people forward and they would get those changes without necessarily expecting to. Um, but it's not a problem for extension v5 extension v5 right you would not automatically roll forward to v5 of wix toolset extension um, major versions take 
uh, a bit more effort to move forward to them. I would say that unless there's significant reason, and I don't know whether breaking changes prohibited during the major versions is, is something that qualifies, the Wix tool set for V10 is really confusing. Yeah. It it is the most is the most odd. Yeah. Sure. True. It's not it, you're right. It's it's probably not that confusing. It's just weird. Yeah. It it's but it is more kind I guess well, I don't know. .NET standard they decoupled the .NET standard. They chose to decouple the .NET standard from the .NET Core. So .NET standard 2.1 is first implemented by .NET Core 3.0. And that's not at all confusing. Um, yeah. Oh wait, that was that was sarcasm. <laughs> um, the, there is I mean, one advantage of of Wix Toolset 4 dot extension name is that we could have breaking changes in extensions that are purporting to support the same major version of, of Wix. Um, but I, 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 I have to question how we'd even pull that off. How we'd pull off a breaking change? Well, it, I guess, well, just logistically, and this comes back to my favorite topic of micro repos, what we've talked about is having, you know, e extensions essentially be able to move at different speeds than the core tool set. Yep. Um, but at a certain point, say Wix 5, the extensions have to come along and we're either forking the repos or, you know, doing some complicated build logic uh, to pull off building extensions for, you know, the previous release of the core tool set. I think it's just release, I mean, that's just release branching. I don't think that's a huge problem. I and mean, you have that no matter what you do if you don't fork your entire repo of versions, which granted is what Wix has done in the past, but. Right. Worst case, if there's a compelling reason for a breaking change, you could create it as a new extension. Oh, that's pretty brutal. Let's well, it's just moving the number, right? It's either Wix tool set four that extension name or Wix tool set that extension name too. Yeah, you're right. That it would be be like, uh, yeah, we, we totally goof this. So here's Wix tool set dot util two. <laughs> oh, we, we could, we could call it, you know, util EX. Oh yeah, there we go. And then for the third time, then we'd have to switch to numbers or we could do EX two, EX three, you know? Yeah. Right. <laughs> Just like, ah, com rules. Just um, like com yep. Let's see. Which one is hard to get out of, I guess, is an interesting question. Um, let's say we change our mind in Wix Toolset 5. I guess it doesn't really matter. Because if you're if we changed our mind in Wix Toolset 5 to a different scheme, which is presumably the next time that we would, you know, completely reevaluate the scheme. For example, we hit enough problems where we're like, we don't like the scheme that we chose for whatever reason. Um, then I guess Wix Toolset 5 could change either way and it wouldn't be that big a deal beyond the, yeah. the re-education, which is going to be a challenge either which way you go. You're, either way, you're going to have to do some manual work to, to pick up a new major release. So. Now, the other thing about Wix toolset extension name v4.0 is that would we re release all extensions if Wix toolset 4.1 comes out? 4.1 wouldn't have any breaking changes, right? Yeah, it shouldn't. So. You would technically, you should not have to re release all the extensions. But then you'd be getting extensions that are 4.0 working with 4.1. Maybe that. I guess it doesn't sound as bad when I say it out loud as I was thinking maybe it did in my head. No, uh, hey, uh, frankly, if, if we can't do that, then I'm going to go back to my, my normal rant and say, why are we hurting ourselves so much with the work to do micro repos? 
if we can't version them separately, excepting a major release. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. So that means it sounds like we're all kind of leaning towards the second option pretty heavily then. I, I'm not hearing anybody pro to uh, defend or promote the first option. Is that correct? I think, I think Blair voted for the first option. Say that again? I think Blair voted right. for the first option. So that was going to be my next thing was that the only person of the set of people here that I remember voting for the first option was Blair. He's not here. doesn't usually make this meeting time. Um, but he'd be overruled anyway <laughs> um, at a certain level. Um, because, you know, if everybody else is kind of like, yeah, this seems, let's, let's go this direction, then, you know, unless he could convince everybody, then we wouldn't go that way. Well, that might have gone way faster than I thought it would. Um, Can I slow it down for a moment? What's that? Can I slow it down for a moment? Sure. Go back to the first bullet? Yes. Um, so I've, I've been looking at this change, of what we have to do. Um, the the prefix, I think, is fine. We already have this a weird mix of tables without prefixes and some that have a Wix prefix already. Mm -hmm. So moving to, to Wix 4 is, I think, not a big deal. Um, the suffix is a little more interesting since we're adding ARM64. Um, one of the things I've considered is to always use a suffix, even for x86. Okay. I'm not um, against one... that for consistency. Okay. Um, anyone else have an opinion? I, I, I could go either way. Um, but as I was adding them for all the different platforms, I'm like, eh, this is, it's interesting to look at. Sean? Doesn't matter to me. Yeah. Jacob, any opinions? And that he's on the phone. It's pretty amazing. He actually is on his phone watching this and then typing on his tiny keyboard. We'll give him a little time. Um, part of me kind of likes the consistency. There'd be no if statement, presumably. It'd just be a this maps to that. But I guess the array mapping, if you were to do an array mapping of enum to array, kind of, you know, whatever, lookup table kind of thing, uh, that lookup column could just be string.empty and it would be the same. So It's a switch statement, but okay. Yeah, sure, whichever way. It's, yeah. Whatever the lookup, however the lookup table is implemented. Um, right. it, blank versus x86. Um, yeah, it's it, right. It's trivial. It's trivial. Yeah. I, the, the funny thing is I'm wondering when do we get to a world when we don't build x86 anymore because everything is, you know, 64-bit. I don't know yeah, when that is. It's not right it, now, but if you looked point. around, I, I I gotta wonder whether most people are building 64-bit packages yet. I think we're a ways off from that. Yeah, I, I I hear you because, you know, why why um why pick something that narrows you down? Um, but because XA6 should just work everywhere. Uh, Until that day when the WoW, you know, system is truly and completely gone. Um, well, well, we face that on server, right? You can yep. disable WoW on, on server, so... Yep. Um, yeah, definitely not the first time people have requested real 64-bit uh, custom actions. And, you know, we got, there, we, we got there partially for ARM64. Yeah, and to be fair, I mean, pure x64 custom actions just... A matter of work. It's not a matter of should we or shouldn't we. That, yeah, that's not no. that's not philosophical at all. Mine's more of you know should we ever get rid of XA6 completely. Well, I don't know I, I'd, add, I, I, I'd add should we get rid of ARM ARM32. Oh, well, ARM32 then too. ARM32 is pretty dead at Microsoft. Yeah, for Windows it's dead. Um, for Wix, it's been dead for years because we only recently, well, did the work to enable ARM on um, 
on 3.x. Um, still have not done it for 4. Mm -hmm. And I don't know that anyone cares because of the... The only time it was supported was in Windows RT. Right. Um, and so that, I mean, is, that is long gone, right? I, actually, I'm, I now that I, as I started to say it, I thought about what the life cycle might be. I don't know off the top of my head if it's actually, you know, out of support. Yeah. If it's out of support and it's the only place you could use ARM32, I'd be all for removing it as part of, you know, the, the Wix4 work to... Get consistent on on naming and such. I have a an old Surface that I still use for reading the news <laughs> occasionally. It's a WinRT machine. Wow! But less and less works on it. <laughs> like I had a news reader, an RSS reader that has stopped working. I'm, I'm just like, oh. and of course they're not updating it. So. Because why would you? Who still runs this thing? Yeah, um, I think that's an interesting thing to go get down to. So anyway, I think the suffix, uh, we're all kind of like, whatever's most straightforward for x86. That's probably the answer. Okay. I, I, I'll take a look. I, I'm, I'm going to try it out. I'm trying it out right now with x86 suffix. Okay. And uh, I'll see how it goes. I think I think that's probably that. You know better than we do. And given that we don't have strong opinions, I think probably you'll get to make the call for x4. I will not abuse my power much. <laughs> Thank you. So mm -hmm. I think in summary that says the table of custom action prefix Wix4 looks good. The suffix decide on the x86 versus uh, being none or not, but otherwise there will be a consistent suffix for custom actions. There's, of course, no suffix for table names. Um, and the extension name here, we're looking at going for option two here without the four in it and knowing that we will have challenges with breaking changes in the mix of it, but given everything else that we have evaluated, we're probably going to call that okay. That probably should not be a huge problem. Um, and we can revisit this in Wix uh, 5. And honestly, worse comes of worse, I guess we can just kind of bail on the whole thing in the middle of 4 and be like, you know what, we're going to get rid of the Wix tool set without the 4, put it in, and move everything over. We could do that even in the middle more user education, not ideal, but could be done. So uh, everything on the top row and the second option for the bottom item. And I think we can finally declare this item at least, uh, well, decided. <laughs> then there's just a matter of going doing the work. Um, Sean, I think the extensions are already versioned like this, right? Like the extensions are currently set up to behave the way that this, the way we're deciding right now, right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, because the version number is consistent. So that means we're done with, with Bob working on the table name and custom actions things. Then we're done with the this decision as far as making decision, and then the work is underway. Is that kind of crazy? Does that sound right? Yeah. Yeah. Ah. <sighs> Finally, things are starting to go the easier way as opposed to always the hard way. All right, cool. So let's talk about another highly contentious item. Not really. Um, meaning time and daylight savings time. Um, daylight savings time is going to hit, I guess, I don't even know if, I can't say the majority of the world, but uh, where Bob and I live uh, coming this weekend and does not catch up to Sean for another month or so, which puts him even more behind the, or earlier in the morning, um, at noon. Uh, Wednesdays have been working out well, I think. Um, I certainly have made them fit well into my schedule. I'll say that noon has also been working out just fine, uh, given the um, when kids are in school and all that kind of stuff. But I know without DST, it's not going to work for Sean. So one proposal is to keep them on Wednesdays and move them to 1 p.m. Uh, Pacific Daylight Time, which would basically keep it the same time for Sean. Um, and be a little bit later for everybody else around the world. But I'm, of course, open to other ideas if things are not working well for the people that are showing up here. Um, opinions, ideas, Sean? Uh, I thought this would keep it pretty neutral for you, and then we would go from there. Is that good or bad or okay? Yeah, so 1 p.m. will work until daylight savings ends here in April. Right. 
and then it still mm-hmm. isn't that bad for you, I hope. So, like, 1 p.m. keeps it at 7 a.m. Yep. Eastern time. And then once daylight saving ends here, it'll go back to 6 a.m. Right. Which you've been surviving with lately, I think. Well, no, I haven't done 6 a.m. before. <laughs> oh, wait. And surviving is quite different from, you know, flourishing. Right. I mean, we can move it, try to move it back to two. Um, so, like, 1 p.m. would work for a month, basically. Well, that's And not then good. it'd be two. Australia is like the hardest thing to nail. Um, that time zone is challenging. Well, we could go later. So 2 p.m. puts it at 5 p.m. on the east coast. So that's kind of the end of the day there. Should we do that idea then? I mean, cause there's, I don't want to keep moving it around if we can help it. It just makes it harder for people to know when it really is. Works for me. 3 p.m. is 6 p.m. I think that's pretty bad for the East Coast. That's like, you can at least argue through 5 p.m. is like end of the work day, but 6 p.m. is kind of really into people's lives that they moving on. Um, all right, so I, I guess I'm looking at 2 p.m. then in that proposal in that time frame. Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to throw that out there and see how far it goes. So this proposal is incorrect here. We'll come back with the idea of 2 p.m. and see how that goes for a little while. My challenge, of course, is both kids are home from school, so I might have people run around in the background. So um, always getting that. We'll see. You guys have to let me know if we get too much background noise here. Uh, but all right. So we're going to I'll move it to Wednesdays at 2 p.m. Throw that out there and see how that goes. All right. Anything else people want to talk about today? Questions, comments, other stuff going on? Bob, Sean, Jacob? Nope. Nope, nope. All right. Well, given the silence out there, I think we're going to call it good. Uh, the next meeting then will be in the new time slot, so I'm going to send it around, but I think that says March 18th at 2 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time. And uh, hopefully that lands well with uh, a little better around the world, and we'll see if we have more people show up. Um, So until then, two weeks from now, 2 p.m., you guys take it easy, and we'll see you then. Bye. Bye. Bye.